guys for being here. This is Get on the Bus, presented by Salvage Station. I'm ADL. We have with us Handmade Moments, this uh, two-piece out of Arkansas that I've just been falling in love with their music recently. We're so happy to have them. We have Anna Moss and Mr. Joel Ludford over here. <laughs> he is, as you can see, a unicorn. I'm a tuba so, unicorn. A unicorn. A tubicorn. A unicorn. A unihorny. I don't know. Like, the handmade, like, let's just start with, let's just go straight at this, right? Like, Handmade Moments is the name of your band. Like, you guys understand that like people are gonna read that and the first thing they're gonna think about is masturbation or hand jobs, right? Right. Okay, all right. I just wanna make sure that we're like on the same page right across the bat. Um, so let's go from, from talking about uh, job or hand jobs to like something a little heavier here. So um, there's this quote that I read from you, Joel, in the KC Theater. And we're just gonna dive straight in. It says that all presidents do, do, do damage but that Trump is the most accurate representation of the history of America. Yeah. I was wondering if you could kind of unpack that a little bit for us. Sure. I That quote came out of some frustration I had for people being so surprised that Trump was our president. Yeah. So surprised that this country was, uh, it was not is like such a racist country founded on uh, conquering other peoples and and founded and sustained on war. So I think that he's just like a very accurate representation of what our country has always been and, and have what our, our institutions have always been. Even Harvard University was founded by slave owners, um, Dartmouth University, uh, University of North Carolina, all these were founded by slave owners and really like propped up and um, and funded by slave owners yeah. throughout, throughout the, 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 the really beginning years of those institutions, those big universities. So for me, that, that's what it means. It's just, yeah, this is America. This is the, this is the continent where Europeans showed up yeah. and, so, and we had guns and the natives didn't. And we were like, this is ours now, you know? And so he's, he's very much that, you know? If, if he's much. not that, I don't know what he is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, he's made in our own image as, yeah. as much as like we want to not pretend that the case which to me is maybe even less it's very dangerous it's very dangerous but so is a president that expands wars from two wars to seven yeah or two to eight like obama did and then the international world doesn't have such an outcry because it's not so obviously gross yeah you know so both are dangerous that's so true it's so true that like yeah sometimes the really obvious creepers are the easy ones to point out but but the guys that are a little more subtle are the ones that are the problem. They're also, bi yeah, big problems. Yeah. You got the Democrats gave us Trump, you know, by, by sabotaging the election. Yeah. So it's like... By sabotaging themselves. Yeah, by sabotaging you know? themselves. So, so, so I wasn't, I'm not surprised. And yeah, it's, it's a very much, he's just a very accurate president for our country. I think we have so much more than that, but as a, as a whole, as a, as a giant institution, and if you look at our history as a whole, yeah, it's a pretty good representation of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sadly. Very sadly. And y'all address a lot of these issues in your music, some of them very directly, some of them uh, a little less directly. Um, a lot of things, a lot of the themes that come up, I hear a lot about global warming and a lot about the environment. I know y'all are... Y'all are doing this thing where you stick around a day after your show and plant trees with people. Is that? Can you tell me about that stuff? That sounds pretty cool. We uh, we try to do it when we can. It's called Action Days, where we can get fans from our shows to come the next day and help us plant trees or work in a community garden or whatever we can get organized. Yeah. And we've been able to do some in Arkansas so far, and we're trying to expand to more places that we're playing. Um, but yeah, it's it's part of what we, uh, with our label Jumpsuit Records. Every time you stream our music on Spotify, a percentage of the money goes to funding Action Days. So whatever huh. we decide to do, whether it be buy trees from a, a local nursery to plant in the ground, um, is paid for by streams. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So obviously you should be streaming as much as possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, nobody's gonna complain if you just want to put it on stream and go to sleep. You know, for the end of the night, nobody's gonna have any problem with that. Um, <laughs> we got a train rolling by, so we're gonna take just a little like step back for a second because I need to have, have trains. 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 That trains. Works. That functional trains. High speed trains. What if we just yeah. stop spending? We're good, right? We're just rolling. Save money yeah. on work. Keep yeah. War. What if we? Yeah. What if we just stop spending all this money on creating new wars everywhere? That like like on being basically we're like the global mall cop at this point. 
Yeah. Maybe we could like hold off on being a mall cop. But we're like, but we're like going and into like Spencers people. and like literally like shipping teddy bears and stuff. <laughs> uh, we're like enslaving like Derek who works the counter. Yeah. So, like, Derek just wants to be free. Like, dude, Derek just trying to get he's trying to get on soda break. He loved the soda fountain. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back real quick to these action days that we were talking about, right? So you guys do these action days, you fund them through your Spotify streaming, and you were gonna, you wanted to talk about one specifically. Yeah, we did one recently in Arkansas, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. That's like the most recent home we've had. Um, since then, we just rented a house in New Orleans, um, so that's kind of our home too. But we were in, we were in Fayetteville, and we uh, planted. An entire guild of trees, um, maybe like 40 or so trees, 40 or 50 trees, from hazelnuts uh, to fruit trees to figs, m- figs native native pollinators, um, bee plants and uh, butterfly plants, things like that. And it was the day after our show. We had a good amount of volunteers show up, maybe 25, 30 people, and we planted all these trees together in this community farm park. In this community farm called Tricycle Farms in Fayetteville, we work with them as much as we can. We help them out with their fundraisers called Pesto Fest. One amazing thing they do is they fight food insecurity in mm. Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. And one out of four children in that county, um, in Washington County, are food insecure. So uh, that's like a, like a kind of a soft word for starving. You know, they're nutritionally deficient and they don't have enough calories. So, one amazing thing that Tricycle does is they do a food recovery program where they go to tr- they go to the large uh, grocery stores like Whole Foods yeah. and Harps and Kroger's and uh, WalMarts and things like that, and they salvage the food before it goes old or like the yeah. day before it's taken off the shelf. They'll go in there and take it and disperse it and also whenever they're dispersing it to the hungry they're teaching people about how to grow their own food and how to not rely upon such a wasteful and outdated food system yeah yeah and i mean our food system is it it seems like all of our systems are a little bit fucked up honestly at the moment wasteful and outdated um yeah yeah archaic a little bit um and hard to figure out like where you're going to move forward from that right yeah. Easy. It's, it's possible. It's easy, it's, it's easy and possible, but it would it would mean that big corporations wouldn't would no longer profit from growing just corn. Yeah. Or just soy. Yeah, it would mean like or just wheat in the people would profit. You know, however many mile radius. People would profit and the earth would profit because we'd be re- rebuilding soil and we would be building up our lands and growing lots of food. But there's not a huge profit to be made by any billionaires. Yeah. And that's the, In that field, that's yeah. the struggle. Yeah. With, with capitalism, I guess. Capitalism. And food. Good old capitalism. You know, capitalism. Like, like we're, we got like, We can't go too far into this. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about other things. Because I want to talk about the fact that it's pretty obvious from reading some interviews with y'all. Y'all really value um, self help on the road. It sounds like y'all take time to stop and swim and check places out and and give yourself breaks. Um, can you talk about how you feel like like that impacts your shows, your live show, when you're actually up in front of people? You gotta take time for yourself, and it's really hard to do on the road. It's really hard to get a, a moment to jump in the river, because if, if there is an extra moment, you just want to be sleeping or mm. anything. But if you can get out there and go on a hike, go on a swim, anything, it definitely helps with mental health for sure. <laughs> And, and, I mean, mental health, I think, is a big part of everything else that's going on right now today. Um, what else do y'all do? Do y'all, do y'all have therapists at home? Do y'all... I wish. <laughs> we, uh, we need them. <laughs> I think uh, I'm very... Th- the more I travel around the world, the more I'm shocked and surprised at how far behind this, this country is when it comes to social programs such as mental health and physical health. It's really hard, it's really very difficult to get a doctor, to get a psychiatrist, to get a new practitioner, to get an insurance policy. It's all like a lot of effort, especially when you run your own business and and you're your own driver and you're your own everything. So, no, we don't, we can't afford the time um, right now. Therapy. We both were in a very traumatic car wreck. Yeah. We both suffered from 
was three years ago. Like we're coming right up on three years ago, right? Yeah, now. just about three years ago. We were, we both suffered a lot of trauma from that, so we both have like a post traumatic stress mm. disorder, or stress syndrome, and right now we deal with it by getting out in nature and doing a really deep breathing and meditation. Those are like the only self help things that we can use that we have available to us is just taking time to like clear your your mind and only focus on breathing and trying to get as much oxygen in your body as possible and then like swimming and enjoying nature and enjoying the the interaction between your body and the natural world I think it's very therapeutic and it's something that when you're in a car every day uh, your body craves yeah your body really craves to be in the natural world mm-hmm. and to just lie down in the river and float and all that so we soak that up as much as we can earlier in our career before we got to be so busy now we're really busy we would always uh take time to go to hot springs and go to cold springs and one reason we were able to do that is because we didn't have such a busy schedule we wouldn't book like a bunch of shows we'd book like maybe in two weeks we'd book maybe three or four shows yeah and then we'd have time to pick up shows between it and do whatever go to the river and hang out there so it's even more important now than yeah. ever to jump in the busy, river. there's busy, a river busy. over there right? yeah there's a river right there i'm gonna jump in that thing yeah pretty go soon. for it <laughs> busy 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 <laughs> well um so y'all are originally from arkansas you're Hell now yeah. living in new Orleans. you said you wanted to move to new orleans because you thought it might thicken up the music a little bit ooh, it ooh, gave me ooh, a really ooh. good like visual <laughs> so, like, how do you feel that's going? Is it, is it starting to thicken up a little bit? I love it. I love New Orleans. It feels good to be there. And whenever we're gone, I, I, I'm always so excited thinking about going back. Um, it's thickening her roof for sure. It's thickening my inner roof. <laughs> I see that. Yeah, yeah. There's so many amazing jazz musicians, and jazz is my roots. Yeah. So that's, like, what I started when I first got into music as a child. I was listening to Billie Holiday, and Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, all these old jazz singers, and I was singing all these songs as a little kid. So being around it when it's all around me now in New Orleans is so inspiring. And um, yeah, it's definitely thickening my roof for sure. Awesome, it's thickening my roof for sure. I'll tell you how. Um, I have I have this sousaphone, and <laughs> a couple years ago after the the car wreck. All of our instruments were destroyed. Yeah. We had no instruments. And that beautiful bus. Yeah. yeah. And a beautiful bus. It ran on solar. Uh, it had a solar-powered stage. It had a engine that ran off of vegetable oil or waste oil. And it was painted by a muralist. And we would play shows on the stage on top of the roof. So that was destroyed. And with it, my hip and my feet uh, were both rendered uh, useless for a while. And my instruments were all destroyed. Mm. So, a very awesome, kind woman that I'd met right before the wreck uh, donated a sousaphone, an old, old uh, E-flat sousaphone to me right after the wreck. She said, Joel, I, I know you were looking for a tuba, and I know you don't have any instruments right now, so I wanted to give you this sousaphone. So she gave me the sousaphone, and it got me back into the sousaphone again. And so since I moved to New Orleans, I, I got a new sousaphone. This is a B-flat sousaphone. All right. You can't play E-flat in New Orleans because it's too puny. Okay. Yeah, it's a little baby. They need something right. fatter, this, heavy. This is a big heavier, one. This is a bass horn. You gotta have that big bottom so, on it. So my roux has been has has increased in the low end. You know, every yeah. morning I'll just like wake up, I'll get my scissors phone, I'll walk out my front door, and I'll just take like a right and walk down the block like eight blocks, and take a right for four blocks, and take a right for eight, take a right for four. And back in my house, so I just like walk around, <laughs> just playing Susan phone, playing Susan phone, like interact with people. I'll see other musicians yeah. I know, and like that, that in, that influences me a lot. And the music culture is worth mentioning in New Orleans. Like, oh yeah, God, the the you got, you know, maybe four to eight European cultures and all their instruments mm-hmm. that showed up to the New World, and then you've got in that area, you know three to five Native American tribes, main big tribes. And then all of the music from Africa. And then you had, you know, maybe 20 different tribes from Africa. So you're talking like maybe between 20 to 50 different cultures and all their music in this one area. 
uh, and everyone is living together and eating together and drinking together and fighting with each other. <laughs> Megan, you know, the the Mardi Gras Indians. Uh, that's a tradition where the the Native Americans would help sneak the the black slaves off the plantations mm. into safety. And to this day, the black people who still live in New Orleans wear these beautiful dresses that are Native American dresses. Mm. They sometimes take three years to make these dresses. These tiny little beads. Made by beads. Tiny made, beads made with feathers. thousands of beads on them, the most beautiful designs. And they have these big um, celebrations to honor the Mardi Gras Indians. It's really beautiful. That is really beautiful. And that culture is like, that's how my root is thickening. I'm, I'm soaking up all this and learning all these different rhythms and different yeah. songs, different melodies from all around the world. Yeah. And also learning like the history and and learning why it feels so deep and feels so heavy yeah. in, in that town and in, in, in that music. And being around people that revere the people that were actually doing the right thing, not around people that revere old white slaveholders, you know? And yeah. like you guys have talked about being from Arkansas and spending time in Arkansas and how um, you kind of alluded to this, that sometimes there's, you know, and I know I've been in a place called Lake Toxaway where there's like this constant sandpaper on your soul mm. because of the, the place that you're at out in the rural south. And, and that can force you to write more. It can force you to create more. How do you think that, you know, growing up in a place that, you know, even like a place here like Asheville, we have so much progressiveness. And then you go right down the road and you have Rosman, which in 2013 had a city paid for birth of the KKK day parade, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, like, how does that, how has that shaped who you are today as musicians and writers? For me, it's, the contrast is very helpful in a lot of ways. I was raised in a very conservative spot. And um, I saw those points of view from a very early age. And that was part of what was shaping me and then, and then getting out of that and forming my own view and then traveling. It's good to see both sides, I think. It's yeah. really, because people are, I feel like people all want the same things. We all want to feel safe. We all want love. We all want to eat. Um, we all want shelter. And just how we're getting that is where things start to get muddy and confused. And then there's propaganda on TV and we're all pitted against each other. And um, yeah, it's wild but I think at the bottom of it we all just want a good life yeah at a young age I I grew up in Arkansas we both grew up in Arkansas and Arkansas is um, a very impoverished state it's a slave it was a slavery state um, and I could feel from a young age like there's there's like some something's wrong something very mm -hmm. broken something was off and the priorities were not straight or something and so it's always I've always tried to use that as my guide you know when when you when you grow up in a situation or in a place that maybe has a lot of problems like bigotry and racism um, then if you feel something inside of you that says oh that's not right then that's like your soul or that's like your guide that's that's you telling yourself what how you feel about mm -hmm. the world around you so I, I consider myself lucky to to have grown up confronting so many of these problems at such a young age because it's shaped who I am and yeah now that I'm an adult like I know how I feel about issues because I had to confront them at a young age I know that the incarceration rate is crazy and it and it un, it's, it, it favors um, certain demographics yeah. and I know that very uh, much so. I know that where I grew up um, it was a very racist place and I, and I remember hearing things like uh, black people have an extra muscle in their leg yeah or yeah like, yeah like yeah I heard that like one for sure like very like de very like Harvard 18th century race science yeah. kind of stuff that's still like left over and, 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 and all the lost cause stuff and all the lost cause stuff and, yeah. and, and, and learning about the Tuskegee experiments and uh, so I was glad I'm glad now that I grew up in such a I grew up in like the heart of slavery because I, I 
I have been confronting it and the problems in my society ever since. And I use those problems as like jumping off points. If there's a problem, there's got to be a solution to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's what that's what it's done for me. And I see I see people, friends of mine that have grown up in like bubbles mm-hmm. where they don't have to confront these kind of harsh truths of the world, and they're just now having to like make up their minds about how they feel about corporatism and about uh, the global market and about um, the world we live in. Yes. And, uh, and your shirt kind of ties in with this, right? Can we look at this shirt real quick? Yeah. This shirt represents spanking the patriarchy into submission. <laughs> so this man here, he represents the corporate oligarchy that holds us down. And the woman represents feminine balance, bringing the feminine back and bringing some balance into the current system. Spanking him into submission. <laughs> it's like, and I'm seeing it. Like I see it so much compared to like ten years ago. Just the way I see uh, women dress and express themselves, and like show their armpit hair and mm-hmm. grow their leg hair out. It seems like women don't give a fuck. Hell yeah. Um, and like, and that's how it should be. And that's how it should be. And that's how it should be. And like that's like it's coming. Like men, buckle up, because like we have. I mean, I'm sure we've Galen, been we've, we've been in control for the past bit, right? Especially in this country, like men have been the leaders of this culture, and we're we're driving ourselves to extinction, or driving the entire world world to Every collapse. Day. So it's Jesus. time to it's time to pass the ball over and see what the ladies can do. They harbor life within their body, you know, and we yeah. like we 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 gather resources and bring it to the family. You know, so it's like we need to chill out on the gathering resources thing. And it's like harbor, harbor more life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's plenty keep, of keep, let's, let's keep us alive. Let's keep the human humans and the other species on this planet alive. I think that should be our next goal. Yeah. It's yeah. just staying alive. Stay, yeah, keep it alive. Classic disco tune. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh-huh. Um, well, so you guys, we gotta, we got to keep moving here because we got to get you guys to your show. Yes. So... So you guys have this uh, album coming out here in just a little bit, and it's going to be an album full of covers, is that right? Um, I, I guess you guys probably don't want to give me too much information, but can, can you give me some kind of spoiler here? Like, what are, what are we looking at here? We're looking at a whole splash of different colors. James Brown. James Brown. We're looking at a little bit of Chaka Khan. Hell yeah. We're looking at some Grateful Dead. Hell yeah. John um, Lennon. John Lennon. Basically, we love playing covers and we've been playing different covers just songs that we really like that we really dig for many years and we'll put out videos we're doing a little bit of Erica Baidu Bill Withers Bill Withers. Bill Withers songs that we like and we put videos online that people liked and here's your clue here's your clue if you want to figure out what is on the album you go to our YouTube page or go mm. to our videos on our other social media sites Facebook and Instagram Facebook. Find your favorite ones, and then videos. That, that, those favorite like cover videos that we've done. And if that's your favorite song, there's a good chance that we're putting it out. All right. Yeah. And y'all are gonna play one right now. This cover for me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's this see what we one. got. This is once again. This is get on the bus presented by Salvage Station and IMAVL. Uh, this is handmade moments. We're really excited to have y'all here. Thank you so much for your time. And we have a saxophone on this bus, and I'm pretty fucking psyched about that. Yeah. The tide is high, but I'm holding on. I'm gonna be your number one. I am not the kind of girl who gives up just like that. Oh no, it's not the things you do that tease and hurt me bad, it's the way you do the things you do to me, but I am not the kind of girl who gives up just like that, oh no. Number one, number one. 
Presented by Salvage Station and IMAVL, we have with us Miss Anna Moss, Mr. Joel Ludford, and they are handmade moments. And I don't even really know what else to say. I am flabbergasted and speechless, which is pretty fucking weird. So get on the bus, we'll see you next week. Destiny, do you know? 